just let me know because I, or if I like have food on my shirt, <coughs> let me know. Is that a lobster steak? That's it probably already. <laughs> I'm only here 12 seconds and I've got pain all over me. Okay, um, most, ha have you all seen me before? Do you know what, no. have any idea what temper resist is? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I um, went to FIT in New York City and I took this um, class called Experimental Techniques and I missed the day we had this class so I got my directions secondhand and I did it wrong but um, the way the uh, it's a mixed media technique it's a wash off process it's called temper resist but it's not really a resist I didn't name it so um, I don't it's kind of confusing when you hear the the name because resist you think more like fatigue or something with wax um, what I do is I use uh, watercolor paper um, I'll give you a keep thinking I'm going to hold something here. I'll give you a couple of examples just to, uh, you had a stack. what's that? You had a stack. I had a stack. Oh, yeah, over here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, what I do is I, I paint on uh, watercolor paper. I usually use 140 pound um, cold press. You can use hot or, or rough. Um, you can use 90 weight. I originally learned it on um, illustration board, but as I got into bigger pieces, it started to shred when you put it under water, so um, I would stick with the watercolor paper. The texture of the paper will give it different looks. If it's hot press, it will be, you all know what hot press paper is, because you're all watercolors. So. What I'm going to do today, actually, it's like a, there's a, there's a lot of um, drying time, so I'm, I'm going to be like one of those old cooking shows where you mix the cake and put it in the oven and pull it out. <laughs> so I'm going to start. Is this one where I, there's a mirror or I just hold it up? Yes, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, oh. It over there. okay. So what I'm going to do is start, this is my drawing, and you can see I do whimsical things and I do um, realistic things, the fishy boats. These take about 40 hours, so I don't think you want to watch me do a demo, but it's the same technique. So I should be doing it this way, right? Hold her up higher. No, no, no. no. Oh, there. There you go. Okay. Move it toward the front. Okay. There you go. Got that? Yeah. Okay. This is my favorite painting, and it just sold. This is a reproduction. It was funny because my. Um, Mother was saying how she read an article that said you should like keep a couple of your paintings to kind of mark your progression and all, and that was my favorite, probably one of my favorite paintings, and it sold that afternoon, so that was kind of bittersweet. And I was thinking I should have thought that a long time ago. Maybe it would have sold earlier, but anyway. <laughs> so this is another fishing boat, and these are both on cold press. Forward. Oh. Bring it forward. Okay. Perfect. By the end of the day, I might get it right. <laughs> okay, this was the um, Devin Horse Show poster. This this piece is actually kind of what got me doing this um, technique. I, we had a assignment in school. I have a degree in illustration where we had to do a um, a uh, poster for the U.S. Equestrian Team. That was our pretend project, and I did a painting like this. And it was a one-time one time, uh, deal. I only did that technique that one time. And when I got out of school, I um, got a job with the, not a job, but I was working with this group of illustrators and graphic designers and everything. And one of them later became the art director for Equine Veterinary Journal. And she had seen that the painting similar to that and called me and asked if I could do some covers for them. And the nice thing about, um, Illustrative work is they pay you for the printing rates. So they pay you and then they give you your artwork back. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so that was really nice. So I had six covers with them. Next time I'll bring in the covers to show you. Um, and then when I, at that time I was also doing outdoor art shows. So then I had these sports things. Prior to that I was doing watercolor like everybody and their mother. And I was doing house portraits in pen and ink. And uh, so I had these six horses and someone asked if I did football. And so I did football, and then for like the next 15 years, I ended up doing this technique, sports and everything. And then something caused me to do a whimsical, 
And then that was, I mean, that's all I did for the next, I'm not going to say how many years because I'm starting to get old now, but you know, many years. So I, so I, because of that one painting, I ended up going into temper resist. If I had known now, I probably would have gone into abstracts and I'd be making a lot more money. But anyway, it is a fun technique to do. And um, what's really cool about it is if it works, you can say it's because you're a great artist. And if it doesn't work, you can say it's because it's a hard technique. So it's like a win-win <laughs> situation. And it also makes a real mess of your bathtub. So if you don't want to, like, you know, clean your tub a lot, you can just say, well, it's the ink from the temper resist. Of course, now I have a, a shower, so it doesn't help me much there. I always figured if Phyllis Stiller was going to do painting, this would be the one she would do, so she could get out of doing the housework. So I'm going to start with this. Um, I'll show you how I paint on this. This is 140-pound cold press. And then when it's done, it would look like this, similar. Then I'm going to put ink on this, and then, then it would look like this. And then I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to wash it off. So that's the three-step process. Um, when I learned it in school, and it, it is taught in other art schools, but it's taught with white paint. So you would paint everything that's going to be white or color, you would paint white. And then what you don't paint is going to end up being black. And then when you washed it off, you'd have a white and black painting. And then you could go in and paint watercolor over that. So that might be something, if you guys decide to try this, it's a way of incorporating your watercolor. Um, you know, giving it a little different look. What I didn't like about that process was, one second, is first of all, um, when, you, when you wash it off, it's going to be white and black, and there's going to be little specks of black all over the painting. And when you paint the watercolor over it, it, it dulls the black down. Now, this painting was done where everything that's not black was painted white. And then I went in with watercolor over it. So when I painted over these areas over here, it would dull the black down. And I prefer the really rich black. This happens to be smooth paper, hot press. So the black spaces are bigger, and you don't have a lot of little, little dots. But when you get onto a rougher paper, like this one, you'd have to paint over the black. You couldn't um, just, you know, threw me off for a second because everyone's looking over there and I'm like, what's going on over there? And I didn't know that's me. That's me. Yeah, I know. I could have just stayed in the other room. Um, <laughs> uh, it's been like a year and a half since I've given a demo, so I'm kind of at it. I'm, I'm really rusty, so I apologize. Um, so anyway, so that's how this was done. The advantage to this is you have more control over the color. You can get more shading and everything. Whereas when you see, um, you know, some of the other, other paintings there, I tend to do like big graphic shapes, um, like, sort of like posterized. Um, the other reason I don't like this is, as much is because anyone that knows me for more than 10 minutes knows that I tend to wait till the very last minute to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's painting it twice, <laughs> which is kind of hard. So I figured why paint it two times, just paint it in color the first time, right? and then go back if I have to. So anyway, so this is how it was originally, how it's originally taught in art school. But I did make some changes. Maybe my, my uh, pass to lady, if they want to pass, if they want to pass it around. Um, I could just walk these over. This is a sample of, um, these are all reproductions. This is a sample of the painting on hot press, and you'll see that it, more of the color washes off. This is a sample of it on rough paper, and there's a lot more um, black showing, and what happens is a lot of times people think my work is pastel because of that. The reason I showed this one was because this was my original, what the original painting looked like, and I, I didn't like the yellow base, so I went in afterwards and I put watercolor over it. So this is actually the original you see the original? This is what it looked like before. And so I, I went and put watercolor over it. So you can add things when you're done. If you wash more off or if you want to add some pop of color, um, you can 
use uh, watercolor or Caran d'Ache water soluble crayons, which are a lot of fun. You can also use blue ink instead of black. This is an example of blue ink. Um, when you're using uh, the colored inks, you have to keep in mind that the um, ink, I mean, the paint underneath is going to be shaded by the, the, you know, the ink. So when you're using the blue ink, what was, you know, like an intense red ends up being a little bit more of a purple. And I have done it in like green and red, but the blue works well for um, like winter sports and water sports. Okay, this is an example. This is an original of um, rough paper. And you can see there's a, the little dots all over the place. When I do, um, when I'm working from a photograph, I try to visualize, um, I mean, pick scenes that have areas of black that I think are going to benefit from this technique. This was one with the, um, the fence. It was kind of fun to do, a little anal. But. And this one's another hot press. Um, the reason I brought this one around was because it also kind of looks like a woodcut. And this was a woodcut. Mm -hmm. This image is, was a woodcut that I did in college. And then I ended up doing a um, painting of it. So when I'm trying to come up with a design, I kind of think along those lines, like a printmaking process or, or something that has a lot of black in. This one I brought along because this has some Caran d'Ache water-soluble crayon that I added after I washed it off and it was still wet. Sorry, these uh, water-soluble crayon. Have you ever Same. used them? No. One afterwards, you have to come up and try them. These are Caran d'Ache water-soluble crayons. And uh, you can use them one of two ways. You can uh, you can just color, you know, color with them, and then dip your watercolor brush in water, and then it becomes watercolor. They're similar to um, to the pencils, but they're richer and they're creamier. Yeah. Well, this. This is with it doing it um, with the brush, but they're, I think they're more fun if you dip them in the water. Should get a good color. And then it, it's really it's really more intense. So, so come up afterwards. I don't I don't have to do too many um, I mean, I don't use watercolor or Caran d'Ache on too many of the paintings, but every once in a while, something might need a little bit more of a pop, or I miss a spot. Like I did two um, race horse jockeys, and I missed one of the noses. So when I washed it off, he had a black nose. So I found um, through trial and error that um, pastel works really well. It kind of matches the, it looks like it was done with temper resist going to put wash or temper paint on top of the finished painting doesn't work. It looks, it has a different look when you just put it on straight. So if you're going to um, try to improve your painting or alter it in any way, um, watercolor works good and the Caran d'Ache and pastel. That also um, gives you a little edge if you're like going into a jury show and there's watercolor category and mixed media category. And if you think you have better odds in mixed media, you can put it in mixed media. Throw another media on there. You have to weigh your odds, right? Or am I the only one that? No, you don't have to. But if there's only like seven people in mixed media and 400 in watercolor, then you go for the mixed media. So you just throw a, just throw a little bit of Caran d'Ache on there, and you're. Don't you want the Caran Yeah. Or the pastel. Oh yeah, but I mean, there have been a couple of occasions where I've I've felt it necessary and. To add the other things, like I said, with the guy's nose, that was one issue, um, one situation. Also, years ago when I did this, started doing this technique, I'm sure you've all experienced it, the, the uh, materials change over the years. And you don't always know what they've done, you know, the new and improved, and then you find out that it doesn't work like it used to. So when I first um, did this, or when I first got the job doing the covers, uh, I hadn't, the magazine covers, I hadn't done this technique for like two years and I had only done it a couple of times. So I called my 
old teacher in New York, and I was like, how do I do this? I don't remember how to do it. What ink did we use and whatever? And he's like, I don't know, whatever, whatever ink the bookstore sold. So, <laughs> so I went to Pearl Paints and I bought every ink that they carry and I did experiments. And some ink doesn't wash off at all, so if you're gonna do this, Higgins is the ink. And it was funny because when I went and bought Higgins, they were actually, they were out of it at Pearl. And I told the guy I needed some Higgins and he's like, oh, that's crappy ink, you don't want that. And I said, well, actually, maybe what's crappy, what you think is crappy is what makes it work for me. So um, you can either use the Higgins Black Magic. You can get like these little con little containers. It's um, like four or five dollars, depending on where you get it, or two sixty six if you have a fifty five percent coupon at AC Moore, like I did. But normally I have a thirty two ounce, which I'm on my second in, in like twenty since nineteen eighty five. I've been doing this, and I'm only on my second thirty two ounce container. Um, it just so happens that I was in the middle of moving two weeks ago, and uh, it's my ink is somewhere in a box underneath the tarp in the backyard somewhere, and I've been looking for it for two days, and I have no idea where it is, so I finally had a breakdown on the way here today and buy some more. So anyway, um, okay, so I have watercolor and pastel. So this actually, just so you know that I didn't make it up, there is, it is in this book, the... Um, North Light Illustrated Book of Painting Techniques, but they call it a wash-off process. They're, they're smarter. Um, I don't know if you guys have this book, but it's kind of, do you guys have this in your library? Show it to us. This way. Or this way. Um, North Light Illustrated Book of Painting Techniques by Elizabeth Tate. It's kind of fun because it's just got like a ton of different things and if you just want to kind of shake things up or try something different or you're getting kind of bored with your whatever you're doing. Um, my problem is if I start going through it, I, I tend to, I think I must be getting ADD as I get older because every time I go to an art show or open a book, something looks like fun and, and then I start doing it. It's hard to get back to where I'm supposed to be. Especially collage, that's got to be the worst, especially if like you're a hoarder or a collector. I keep finding these bags around my house and I think they're trash and I'm like, what's this bag of trash doing here? And then I'm just dumping it out and then I realize that those Hershey Kiss wrappers and the little pieces of styrofoam, well that's right, that was for the collage class I took. So um, one of these days I'm going to think it's a collage bag and I'm going to find out there's fish or something in the bottom of it. And, you know. Don't forget the smell though. Yeah, I'm sure. Anyway, so this is... Um, this is how it's done. Can you see this in, in black and white? Yeah. This is an example. So um, what they do is they have the white paper and they're painting white. And that's another problem with doing the white, the white paint is you're constantly turning the paper to see if you've painted somewhere. Um, but they do, and here they recommend putting like a, a light tint yeah, of, um, on the watercolor paper first. So then they painted it put the ink on it and then wash it off and then they left theirs this way just plain so see how it kind of looks like a woodcut yeah. but you can like I said go in with watercolor afterwards this is also a really great technique to do with your kids or grandkids I've taught um, some third graders to do it and uh, what was cool with them is everyone's turned out except for the teacher because he didn't follow directions and he scrubbed it off so <laughs> so theirs didn't turn out and then I taught some 11th graders no 8th graders I had a friend in Florida who's an English teacher and um, yeah, let me, let me hear. she's an English teacher she thought it would be kind of fun for the kids to illustrate their story that they were reading so there's the over two um, and, th and I found that they were, they, their stuff was terrible. They were so anal and tight, and it's, the younger kids do much better because they're not so yeah. tight. The, the adults, the other, I mean, the older kids, they wanted to make these little tiny things, and I said, you'll be doing that forever. You know, it takes so long. So anyway, so this is, I'm going to give you an example now. Oh, this was the last example I had. Um, this originally was pea soup under here, and when I uh, looked at it, I decided I wanted tomato soup instead. And so I can't get the paint off, so what I did was I put like six layers of red over it. And then when it washed off, some of the places went back down to the green, and that's when I realized that the water washing off the painting takes 
one area off differently than the next. So now I kind of do it on purpose. Um, today when I do it, I'm using this. Normally at home I use a sprayer and the, so the, the, the uh, colors are a little bit more random. When I'm doing it in the, in the tub, there's no running water to take it off differently. So I'm kind of tapping it with the paintbrush. So it comes off more um, overall, kind of comes off the same everywhere. But you'll get different results at home if you do it in the, uh, with a sprayer. Okay, so anyway. I'm usually much more funny. I'm not funny today. I apologize. Plus, my throat kind of sounds scratchy. I think, scratchy. I think that's it. Are you using these? Not right now. Sorry. Okay, so you can use temper or gouache. The gouache is the little tubes. You all know what gouache is. Like watercolor, but opaque. And this is cheapy temper paint. You want to make sure you don't get the washable kind. Um, I actually have better results with the temper paint, and I think it's because it's $1.99 for a big bottle as opposed to like $8 for a tube. And I think I put it on a lot thicker because I think when I'm using this, I'm going, $8! Hey, no, don't. <laughs> Just squeeze out little tiny bits. So, um, and I've been doing this since 1985, and I don't want to admit to anybody that I still have paintings from 1985 that haven't sold, so I do know that they don't. Um, fade too much. I mean, they fade, they fade equivalent to a watercolor. You know, if you put them in direct sunlight, they, they will fade a little, but not very much. So, um, so I don't really think there's a big difference between the tempera and the gouache. So, which is also why it's good for the kids because you can, you know, you can really, and, and it's also something that you can try without breaking the bank. I mean, if you wanted to try encaustic, you'd probably be in the hole for a couple of hundred easy, but here you could, you know, spend $8 and be able to do the whole thing if you have the coupon. If not, then it's gonna be more like $12. Um, also, because the temper paints are limited number of colors, you know, just the primaries, I think you, the palette works better together because you're not having to worry about cool colors and warm colors. So that's my that's my reasoning anyway. Okay, so I use styrofoam plates. <laughs> Going to sound like I'm really cheap, but I, you know, they, they work well, and I, you know, that's what I do. That's what I do, whatever, for whatever reason. So um, also when I put the paint on, I know I'm going to, when I wash it off, I'm going to wash off some of the color. So I put the paint on thicker than I would if it was just a regular gouache painting. It looks like a thick paint, very thick paint. Um, it's, it's a little thick, but it's not as thick as, you know, these guys are. That's the other thing I like about the, the, um, those containers is there they come out pretty much the consistency I need them at whereas this this guy I'm going to have to add water to it so um, anyway, so I either if I'm doing like one of the fishing boats and something has to be a specific color then I just put the paint on like a really thick layer if I'm doing a whimsical I might put a layer of red on a flower and then when that dries put pink over it and then put orange over that and then when it dries I cover the whole thing with ink and then when I wash it off some places it will go down to the red some place might be the pink some orange or whatever colors I just said I put on there so that it's it um it's kind of fun because you don't know exactly what's going to happen you're planning for something to happen it's kind of uh, serendipitous. It's like Christmas. You don't know if you're getting stockings or stereo, but you know, you're anxious to see what happens. So anyway, um, I never use a big enough brush, so I'll try to use a big brush. And when I put the ink on, um, I usually designate like two or three bristle brushes for my ink because they are going to, you know, permanently mess up the, the brush. So. Um, I tend to use more angle, angle brushes. Actually, I have about two million brushes, so whatever's handy. I never seem to have a small enough, like the little tiny brushes, because I can't seem to make myself pay 
that much for a little brush when you could get this, a bigger brush for the same amount of money. And it's so stupid because I don't need the bigger brush. Plus my mother is an artist also and she's very generous in that whenever she buys a brush for her, she buys a brush for me. So I have like a million brushes, but I can never tell you if they're my brushes or not because I can't remember because since she's the one that keeps buying them. So anyway, uh, so if you're ever painting with me, you could say it's your brush and I wouldn't remember. Okay, so this is... Those are all bristle brushes, aren't they? Yes. Uh, well, there's a couple of watercolor brushes in here. Um, because the paint is a little thicker, sometimes the, the bristle brushes hold up a little better. And also, um, I want some of the paper to show through. Um, I didn't do it too much on here. That one has more white showing. See how there's some like white specks? Those are gonna end up being black because the ink's gonna stick to that. And the, the paint's water soluble, so when I wash it off, the paint will wash off, but the paint, the ink rather, is waterproof. So that won't wash off. Um, I frequently do um, like outlines around my whimsical things. So these white areas are gonna end up being black as opposed to these white areas, which I think are painted white, and that fence is painted white. But some of them you leave white. If I want it to be white, I have to paint white. If I want it, if I leave it white, it's going to end up being black. Okay. So when you're painting it, you kind of have to reverse. reverse because you don't want to leave a lot of white spots, and then because you're thinking, oh, well, that looks pretty bright and everything, and then when you wash it off, there's a lot of black. Um, I tend to, like on here. I guess because I was using a big brush, there's, I didn't leave a lot of white spaces showing. Um, with the bristle brushes, you can get like a dry brush effect and that, that allows more of the white to show. So that is actually why I usually use bristle brushes. But, uh, I don't know. Anyway, let's see. So the painting's kind of elementary. It's, you know, I'm not doing anything special so usually I can do a demo in about 10 minutes because I, I, I do a demo at the um, Rittenhouse Square art show. Have any of you guys ever been there in Philadelphia? It's a really awesome art show. It's twice a year and they have like 142 artists. So a couple of years ago, I'm on the board and a couple of years ago they started doing demos in the center of the park. So you're supposed to start at one o'clock so I get up and I've got my three paintings and I'm all set and I got like you know seven or eight people there and they listen to me talk, a funnier talk than today, like I said. And uh, they're like, okay, okay, well, could, could you skip the painting? We understand the painting. Can you get to the ink and the wash off thing? And I'm like looking at my watch and it's like 10 after one. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I guess so. So, you know, I do it and I'm done and it's like 12 after. So I'm thinking, okay, now what do I do for the next, you know, 40, uh, 38 minutes? Then more people came up and they're like, Oh, is this the demo? And I'm like, crap, now what do I do? Because I've already done it, <laughs> you know? So then I ended up washing the second one off. So it was interesting because usually I try to leave the ink on like 24 hours. That time I only left it on about 15 minutes. And it's still washed off, but sometimes you run a risk of it being more of a grayish color than black. So, um, okay, so, so like I said, the painting part, because it's so, simple. It's not like you're going to learn anything from the painting part. But I talked a lot faster today than I usually do, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to talk about unless I, unless I do a lot of painting. So when I'm done, ask a lot of questions or something. <laughs> <laughs> or come up and try the Karen Dosh and the rest of you can go eat. Maybe they should start putting the food out soon. Okay, so anyway, um, under these lights I can't even see what, where the where the white is. So I'm going to try to put it more like streaky so it's not cover, covering the whole thing. And that's going to end up white. That's going to end up white. Um, if anybody else wants to come up and paint on it. Do you have, you have to let it dry thoroughly before you put the black on, right? Yes. But that's pretty quick, especially under these lights. Right. Yeah, well, I'm not going to do that. That's why I brought that one. Yeah because this guy was painted this morning, or in between last night and this morning. I 
spent about 12 hours yesterday looking for the ink. I could have gone to AC Moore and gotten it done a lot quicker. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to buy more ink. I'm going to find that one. Okay, so and this, the paint's going on a lot. You had white lines left there too, didn't you, between the colors? There, well, it's a pencil, a light pencil, but once the, the paint's next to it, it looks white. But you see how the dark lines are here? That's going to be black. And, and what I um, frequently do is I'll, I'll use pencil to um, put where I want it to be black. And if I was just starting out and I wanted to make sure I had more black, like in the background, I could, um, you know, just, just put some spots with the black and then I would just paint around it. It was funny because I was doing an um, art show in, a, in the Burlington Center Mall in where I live and uh, I had bees everywhere where I wanted it to be black instead of coloring everything in. And this person was watching me and they're like, is that paint by number? <laughs> and I'm like, well, first of all, B is a letter. <laughs> so, so I guess that would be a no. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a paint by letter painting. Um, but I don't do demo, I mean, I don't paint out on location or like at an art show anymore because it looks like I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, it looks like a little kid painted it. So I, I do it at home now and, and let them think I'm, a, you know, that it's a lot harder than it looks. I'm trying to get this to be more dry brush, but it's not. So you want that rough look? I, I would, I would like some more because if you, if you paint the whole thing, then you might as well just paint it like a regular painting. Why go through the process? Um, so the other problem is when you put the second layer on, if I put a second coat over this, it's going to cover up some of the, the first. When I put the ink on, um, you want to put it on like in different directions, like they tell you, you know, how to paint a wall. Like when I first started doing it, I did nice even strokes back and forth. And then when I washed it off, I realized that it looked like it had lines going back and forth. So um, now I just kind of do it in all directions. And I do one thin layer of ink. I don't, um, I try not to go over the same area several times. Um, what does the temper color not roll? The temper does wash off. If I, oh, still get a lot of color. it would if I kept it under the water continuously. What happens when I'm at home is I'll start, I'll start washing it off from the top. So I'll have a sprayer and I'll work my way down. And once the painting is exposed, I try not to run the water over it anymore. When I do it here, though, I don't have that luxury. So a little bit more comes off when I use the tub. Um, I was going to take everyone in the bathroom, but we would have, I would have had to do like 90 paintings because we only would have been able to do like three people at a time. Yeah, right. That probably would be kind of fun in the urinal or something, right? Just, maybe I could do start like performance art or something. In my memory of having been an art teacher a number of years ago, I remember doing something like this with the kids, but we did soap in the pink. Oh, really? Now, see, make sure it washed off better. I always. Yep, the only people that have ever seemed to have heard about this technique are elementary school teachers. Yeah. So as soon as someone starts to say, oh, I know what that is, I'm thinking elementary school or teacher. But um, I hear all different things, you know, where they use crayons and, and other stuff. So I don't know if anyone actually does it exactly like this. But, but the soap, no, I've never, no, I haven't. put soap in the ink so it make sure it would wash all like this well, I ha you'll see when I, when I do it, I don't really have too much problem getting the ink to come off. It's, the problem is, uh, well, actually, you know, maybe I should try it. Because sometimes when I'm, when I first started doing this, I just had to start to run it under the water and it, and it came off very well. And it didn't all come off. It, it did it in areas. So, that, so a lot of the black was still left on. Now I have to agitate it more. With, with a brush, and because I'm agitating it more, then I'm making more of the paint come off. So maybe this, maybe I'll try the soup. But I wonder if that was because we did it with crayon. Um, yeah, see, so I don't I need to use any crayon. And when I first started doing this, I used, um, I think Utrecht had, Utrecht had uh, temper paint, and Crayola's paint worked really well. 
But then they started making everything washable, yeah. and they and they started eliminating a lot of the temper paint. So I've been on like a search for the last five years trying to find um, temper paint that will work. And I again I went back to Pearls and bought everything that they had, and the AC Moore stuff worked better than than some of the other um, temper paint. And usually when people hear temper, they think egg temper. So you have to, you know, let people know that that's not exactly, you know, that's not the, the type of temper we're using. So sometimes, it, you know, if you want to sound uh, more professional, then, then use the gouache or uh, at least throw some of the gouache in. But like I said, I haven't noticed that, um, it, that the gouache is any more archival. Does it work with any other colors of ink? Um, well, I did, I did the blue. Did I show you the? Yeah. I showed you the blue. Um, but the, the colors, if you use Higgins waterproof drawing ink, um, the, the inks are all transparent with the exception of the black. The black's opaque. The colors are transparent. And like I said, they kind of influence the rest of the color. Like if, you're, if you use the green, it looks kind of weird putting green over some of the other stuff. I guess you'd have to probably use more of a limited palette maybe and just like use greens and blues and not put red in there because when you put the green over it's going to look pretty nasty. Um, I'm trying to kind of use similar color to this one so that, I mean if I go change the colors now, this is the only problem doing the demos, I end up with three paintings that, that are very similar. They never look exactly like but they are similar. Um, but if I went and changed the colors on it now, then it wouldn't make sense to you when I washed off and you'd say, well, how did that house end up being orange if you painted it pink? So I'm just trying to remember what colors I put underneath on some of these, because on some of them I had a couple of layers. I think it was more just a variation of like a, maybe a darker orange and a lighter orange. It's a um, surprise when you wash the ink off. Yeah, it's, it's, um, now I'm kind of like keeping my fingers crossed anymore because it's, I'm having to go in more and paint, paint, intensify some of the areas. So I'm not sure if it's the sizing in the paper or if it's the temper paint, you know, because like I said, they don't usually put new and improved on the, the material. So I'm not quite sure which materials changed that's giving me um, more of a problem. But it was more fun to do 10 years ago because uh, the colors, they just, they were more vibrant and um, didn't wash off so much. Let's see. I have bigger brushes. Mom's probably in the back saying, what do you use these little brushes for? Because I'm trying to stretch my demo out. What time, do you want to like give me an idea of time? Because then when you say, when it's 3.30? And what time do you want me to be done? No, when it's 3.30. Oh, when it's 3.30. 3.30, then we usually break. Okay, and what time is it now? Come on, 5 of 3. It's 5 of 3? Okay. All right. This is more time for coffee and Yeah, so I mean, when you guys are ready for me to go into the other stuff, just tell me and I'll stop this. Because like I said, this is a, this is kind of. Can I ask a question? Sure. It's premature, but. Uh, you're, you're working with large uh, shapes right now, mm -hmm. but you're more uh, technical painting, like the boats. Right. How do you get those fine black lines? I paint around those fine black lines. Like when I'm doing the rigging, I'll do, you know, like the pencil pencil lines, and I have to paint in between all the rigging. I don't use um, ma mask, 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 what is it called? Masking, 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 masking fluid. Masking fluid. Yeah, I don't use that. Or so go back uh, I don't I don't do that either. So when I'm painting, when I'm going around the boats. When you when you draw, drawing the ropes. When I yeah, when I draw it I, I when I draw it I um I do just like I'm doing here where the black lines are, that's where the pencil line is, that's where it's gonna be black. So when I'm doing this, I I drew the pencil lines and then I painted each of these little spaces in between. You did negative. So oh. you painted the negative. white? Negative painting. Yeah. yeah, negative. Negative, yeah. So, um, You're painting around the black. Right, box. like on this in here, I had to paint all those little, little tiny holes. So it takes a lot of, I wonder, it 
plan. Yeah, they, they take, they probably take 35, 40 hours. And when I started getting into the reflections, that's kind of what attracted me to the fishing boats. So I paint in between. I have this one called Canyon Run, and it's got all these nets. I had a twitch in my eye for about a week after doing that one. Yeah, it's like a nervous tick. Um, if you want there's to one in the back where you have a, shade, a gradation from blue to white on the table. On the table there, the blue and the boats. How do you do the gradation? Is that one that you left in white and then colored? You know, I, well, I just started with, with um, white and added blue, but on here, um, this is when I, oh, yeah, this, on this one, okay. this was another, this was another, yeah, I just changed the color as I was going down. But this one does have some Karen Dosh in it. And what happened was our store near me went out of business and they, they had you know, these big containers of temper paint. And I was so excited because I got these big containers. Well, I didn't realize that, that they were making the paints more washable. When I put this thing, this painting underneath the, um, faucet it was like psycho it was like all this blue paint I'm looking down in the in the all this all this blue paint was going down the drain and I could hear that that wah, wah, wah noise in my head I'm like oh my god because of course it was the morning of the art show and I'm thinking oh my god it was, the whole thing had washed off so so in here this purplish and, and some of this blue this went, from, back, in. went back in with with uh, Karen Dosh um, so this one does have some stuff added to it. What's Karen Dosh? Karen, the, the water soluble crayons again. Yeah, yeah. Um, and see, like on this one, more of the ink stuck to when I was painting the background. It's dusty. Um, probably did more dry brush, so there was more more um, black there. When I rough um, paper. This one's just cold press. When it's hot press, it has a lot of little bumps. It looks like pastel on black paper. Um, but what I, I started putting more, uh, covering the surface more on the, uh, on the skies, trying to, because I did this one painting, and when it washed off, there was so much like this that it looked like swarms of mosquitoes were descending on the, uh, the fishing boats. So I, yeah, that's a Jersey Shore for you. So um, I ended up starting to, to cover more of the surface. I was like, if, if I left this like here, all all that would be would be black, and it would be a little bit too much. I mean, I could fix it by putting pastel over, but then I might as well just have done pastel in the beginning, right? It would have taken a lot less time. Sometimes I think I might as well do it that way, since a lot of people never heard of it. At um, Ocean City, I used to do the boardwalk show there, and uh, one year I won the award for pastel which was funny because I had temper resist, I had pen and ink, I had watercolor, I had acrylic, I had oils. The only thing I didn't have was pastel. <laughs> and I went and I said, um, you know, thanks for the award, but I don't do pastel. And nobody had ever heard of it. And it was funny because a friend of mine is a pastel artist and she's like, oh, I heard you're doing pastel. And I'm like, no. So, uh, no, I'm just winning awards in it. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, at least I did tell them that I didn't do it, and they, they said, well, all seven judges picked you, so we're going to let you keep the award anyway, so. But when I, when I do, um, I just found the watermark. Uh, I, I um, have done this a couple of times where I'm not paying attention, and I get the watermark, so when I put the ink on it, we'll say arches on it, so I have to remember to check that next time and flip, flip it. Yeah. And also, um, recently I just did something, I meant to bring it with me, um, where I, I put the paint on thick and then I scratched into it with my paintbrush and then when I washed it off, the black ink had gone into those little areas. So I thought that might be something kind of fun to do. And, uh, yeah, yeah, kind of like that. That might be a good way to do the rigging. It would, it would be, but the problem I have with the rigging, because that's one of the things I was going to try, is the paint dries so quick. And when you're working on the big area of the sky, trying to remember where all your rigging was, it's not like oil paint that, you know, it's, it's uh, moist for a while. I'm kind of like, I'm not sure what I'm doing. So, so anyway, um, I, would, I would keep doing this, and then on, the, like, the next, now that this has a, uh, 
as dried, maybe I'd put a different, you know, different layer of, of paint. I guess this one I'll just, uh, maybe I'll change this, this one up a little since I don't really need to have three of the same painting. What color should I make this house over here? You guys are artists. What would go look good Green, over there? Yellow. Yellow? Okay. We'll red. Now, for some reason, I don't use much red. I don't know why. It's just I've noticed in my, my paintings that well, usually I use a lot of pink. I didn't bring my paint today. So we'll go with yellow. But um, I must not like red too much. I used to wear a lot of it when I was a kid because I looked good in red. But I don't seem to like to paint much with red. Um, adding the white to it tends to make it a little bit more opaque in it, and it um, so it, that kind of works better sometimes too. If I put it straight on, just like the yellow, sometimes it's a little too transparent. And usually the questions I get are, um, does it matter what temperature of the water? I have not noticed whether. Um, warm water or cold water does a better job. Just remember your hands are going to be under it so you don't want it to be too hot. Um, also, no you can't do it with acrylic because acrylic dries and it won't wash off. I'm trying to think what other questions I always get. So what did you add to it? Cold water? No, I added, I added some weight to it so because it wound up being um, more transparent without the uh, if it was just plain yellow. So sometimes adding a little white to it makes it makes it stick better. How are we doing on time? Should we start doing the next stage? Okay. So so we pretend that we did all this and okay, so that's done. I don't you know what he needs to see that, right? Pass it around. Okay, so this is the, the next painting and then what I would do is put the ink on. Let's see. Okay, I need a towel. I need the newspaper first. How long would you let it dry before you put it in? Um, usually I try to let it dry several hours, but it doesn't always happen that way. Like a lot of times it doesn't happen that way. You can use blow dryer on it. I did bring one. Didn't you guys used to do like raffles or something where you raffled a painting yes. off? Do you, well, are you if doing you want that? If you to offer a painting or a print to raffle off, you take chances on it. Okay, because I can, I can uh, if you want to do that today, I brought the blow dryer in case somebody, you know, wanted. So your finished product will be up. Yeah, so we draw. And then I'll, I'll throw it in a mat. Just pull one of the other mats out. Okay. Um, Can you still get a result with the ink on it, or is I, it not a good thing? No. You, you, the, the painting at least has to be dry to, to touch. And when you put the ink on, that has to be dry also. Um, if it's still wet and you start to wash it off, it's going to like get streaky. And, and like um, I think I might have mentioned before, it kind of turns like a gray color. I don't know why, but I've, I've noticed that a couple of times. It doesn't always happen because there's there have been several times where I um haven't let the painting dry as long as I would like. I'm a really 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 bad procrastinator and like I've known about this demo for a year and I started it at uh, two o'clock this morning. <laughs> Mainly because I spent 14 hours looking for the ink, but then it was <laughs> then it was like, uh, well, if I, I don't want to put the picture on the on the computer because I want to watch a video while I'm doing it. So then I was like, well, then I got to find a photograph of this picture. So then my mom's like, you're just doing it so you can extend, you know, procrastinate longer. So I think I actually probably started painting it two or three o'clock in the morning. So we're very happy that you're here. 
Well, what's good though is I learned how how um, you know what you can and can't do. I did a demo at um, Pine Shores, I think two years ago, and I forgot the ink. I left it at my house on the kitchen table. I don't know what I was thinking. I get to Pine Shores, which is like an hour and a half from my, or about an hour and 15 minutes from my house. And I'm like, oh crap, I don't have the ink. And I didn't ink the painting. I didn't ink that painting. So um, fortunately there's an AC Moore and a Michaels in Mana Hawkins. So my mom ran off to my, my lifesaver. Is my mom here or is she hiding? She usually, she doesn't like to stay around my demos because she says I talk to her, talk about her too much. Um, but she really saved my butt that day, and Tom Rutledge saved it because he was very winded that day. He was president, and I said, keep talking, Tom. I said, I need you to talk long enough for my mom to go to A.C. Moore and get the ink. And A.C. Moore didn't have it, so then she had to go to Michael. So I said, keep talking, keep talking. So um, that day I found out that you actually can put the ink on and wash it off 20 minutes later. <laughs> so I still would um, recommend that you wait a little bit longer. So. Um, like I said before, I used to go back and forth, and then I realized that it was like kind of leaving streak, kind of like streaks. So now I, I do it in different directions, but I try not to go over um, the area again. I don't, I don't want the ink to be so thick that I'm gonna, it's gonna be a struggle to get it off. Um, I uh, taught a friend how to do this. She was moving to North Carolina and had been bugging me to learn how to do this. And when I first started doing it, because it's so different, it kind of gave me an edge in some art shows because a lot of people didn't know how to do it. So I wasn't very forthcoming with how to do it. But I figured since she was moving to North Carolina, it was okay. So I um, took her in the bathroom of the VFW and I showed her how to do it. And then she moved to North Carolina and started doing it and entered the artist magazine. Uh -huh. And she came in the top 50 finalists for experimental. And I was like, son, why, why did I teach her how to do that? Yeah. But um, she, she did, she started adding um, a little bit of red and blue ink in with her black. And it made it a little richer. Of course, when I tried it, I didn't mix it enough, and I got blue streaks all over it. So I, I figured I'll just. She yeah, she she had the black ink, and um, Higgins also makes waterproof drawing ink in red and blue and green. So she puts, she used, well, I think she's deceased now, but she started with the black, but she added a little bit of red and a little bit of blue into it. But you really have to shake it up well because it ended up where. Um, with me, I've got this big blue streak going across my painting. And I, I, the black seems rich enough to me, and I think it really um, makes the colors pop, you know, having these bright temper colors. So. I'm trying to see, I guess I'm gonna have to break open the new bottle. What would happen if we added some water to the paint? Um, well, then it would be, no, it, 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 would, it would be, yeah, it wouldn't be as it's opaque, diluted. yeah. And it might not be consistent, so, you know, again. Not gray. Yeah. Oh, just so you know what it is, it's, this, is, this, is like this is Higgins Black Magic Waterproof. <laughs> uh -oh. Black Magic Higgins. It says waterproof pigment-based drawing ink. But, but Higgins also makes a waterproof drawing ink. So you, you can want use... Waterproof? You, water you want waterproof. Yeah. yeah, you want it to be waterproof. What, what's happening is when you're washing it off, the ink's not washing off, the paint's washing off. Paint's yeah. waterproof. The, the paint is water soluble. It's like if somebody was piggybacking on me and I fell. I fall, they fall with me, but they didn't really fall. So um, the ink's going to stay solid. You could run it under water for 20 days until the paint, the paper disintegrates. The ink is not going to come off. Where? <laughs> you do have to. You do have to. Um, 
wash the sink out pretty quick. I have a porcelain, one of those porcelain double sinks in my kitchen, and I, I know I aggravate my mother because I think it, and I try to get it all out, but I get distracted. And I don't, I don't wash my brushes out. She's a fanatic about washing her brushes. But since I have a million of them, I figure I can afford to. <laughs> well, these, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I think when it comes down to it, I probably use two brushes. I think I probably have 14 number six brushes or something. I seem to gravitate. Do other people do that? You go into the art store and you got all these brushes and you go right to the, that one. Even if you're not looking at the number, you always just seem to go towards that one brush. Um, this is a bristle brush, kind of like a no-name bristle brush, because I'm not seeing a name on it. I mean, they don't have to be very super quality because no. this part. And sometimes, like when I do workshops, they'll they'll use those sponge, you know, those you know the 20 sponge brushes for a dollar. But the problem with them is they absorb so much. You'd end up using this whole container for one painting. Um, have you ever tried rolling it on? No, I haven't. Does it get too? You made lines or something. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. People, they'll ask a lot of questions like, have you done this? Have you done that? Have you tried that? I pretty much did it one way and it worked, so I haven't gotten too experimental with it because it's like if it's not broken, why well, fix it or whatever? Yes. So, um, so how do you wash the brush? I just run it underwater. Yeah, this, it will wash off as long as you don't let it dry. Once it dries, then forget it, the brush is a goner. So I, I am fairly decent about getting like 92% of the ink out of the brush. <laughs> but not, I don't get so much, I don't get absolutely every, every drop of it out. Otherwise I wouldn't remember which was my ink brush. So I'm, I'm not. I'm not one of those people who's going to have like this, you know, this brush for 42 years. You know, when you see the people, I've had got this brush when I started painting when I was 12, and, and it's now, you know, 79 years old. Uh, my brushes, I leave them in the water too long, and the ferrules are always, I mean, the stuff's always coming off. These are probably brushes my mother bought me. Yeah, I'm not. I'm one of those do as I say, not as I do people. I mix, put my, my, I usually have my paint in small containers and I'll start off putting it on the plate, but then 10 minutes into it, I'm just dipping it right into the paint container. So I'm, I'm not good that way. So don't do that. Don't do it. Okay. So basically you just cover this and try not to get on your fingers because it doesn't come off for a while. You can make a fortune developing a paint remover for yeah. India. All right, so put that back. Okay, so that's all done. So voila. So then this would go in the oven. I mean, you know. Shh, in the oven. <laughs> you guys disappointed me because usually when I start to put the ink on, the audience goes, <gasps> right, and I forgot to cue you into that. <laughs> See, I know, I know a lot of you have seen, seen it before, yeah. You don't scare us. <laughs> scare, it scares me sometimes, though, because I'm, please, please come off. I don't mind so much at home, but when you're up here with people watching, you, you're hoping that it comes off. And I guess I'm contaminating the ink by putting it back in, but... Do you want me to give you clean water? Nope. I'm, I'll be okay. I'm going to do the big thing now, but let me get this out of the way so you guys can see better. How many hours till the ink is completely dry? It would actually be dry, like, in a half hour. I mean, like... Um, like I said, that demo that I did where the people came and went in 12 minutes, I, I was able to wash the second painting off, but sometimes it get, the ink gets streaky. It's not, it doesn't stay solid black. It, it turns like a 
a gray color. So I try, if I do work when I'm supposed to, like ahead of time, then I, the optimal time would be to leave it on like overnight or something. But I don't work that way. But you should work that way. Don't follow my bad examples. I remember, um, well, Fran Franklin from Garden State can testify how many times I've shown up at the delivery with my painting still in the process of being painted. I used to work at a frame shop, and um, I called my boss and I said, can I use the heat press? Have you guys, you know, seen the big heat press they have where you're going to mount um, artwork onto that, to the uh, foam core and stuff like that, like posters? Well, I asked if he could turn that on for me, and I came over, my painting was soaking wet, and I put it in the heat press, and I closed it up, and it looked like a Chinese laundromat, all the steam's coming out and everything, <laughs> and I dried it that way. The whole time I was driving there, I had the painting propped up on my front seat with all the air conditioner vents blowing on it, trying to get it to dry, because I had to get it from Burlington to Princeton by a certain time. So um, he would always crack up when you know people would come into the frame shop and say, this is a last minute. I'm sorry to be so last minute. You know, I need it in two weeks. He says, last minute. Let me tell you, last minute. She came 10 o'clock, and her painting was soaking wet, and she dried it in the heat, heat press. And then, you know, I think, I think the last Garden State show I did, I framed it in the parking lot. <laughs> I think I was trying to touch it up while my boyfriend was driving. I kept saying, don't go over the bumps. I wish we had one of those cars where you could cut a diamond in the back seat. Because uh, I'm not able to paint this while we're driving. So as I, as I get older, I seem to think in my head that I'm still 20 and can do one of those all-nighters and get things done a lot quicker. And so it's very hard to uh, rectify, I mean, you know, to, to realize that I can't do it. And I'm really just waiting for them to have delivery at, like, my time, which would be, like, 1 o'clock in the morning. If they could... You know, if it was, when I become president, I'm going to make delivery at night, not, not this 9 to 12 crap. You know, I, don't, I don't even function between 9 and 12. So now we're doing the wash-off. No, I'm just going to pull it down, try to get it centered. This is a, this is a, use, I used to use my cat's litter box, and uh, I used to joke about how she was home with her legs crossed while I was doing a demo. Gotta get home, my cat needs to go to the bathroom. If you, if you tilt this, you can kind of see the, you can't see it from there, but you can kind of see the image. This is the one we just, This is the one I just did, right? Yeah, this is the one I just did. That's the one that has the spread yeah. on the back, the sample on the back. That was that one. Yep, you're right. Okay, and another question I frequently get asked is, do you, does, does this get wrinkled? It, I, I submerge it in the water, and then I just lay it flat on a, on a towel, and it dries very flat. So I don't have to um, worry about it being rippled and all. As long as my towel is flat, so I guess it's time to break in a new towel resist towel. It's getting pretty beat up. Okay, so now we. Do you have to maneuver at all in the, in the water, like with your fingers? Um, I use a I use a, a paintbrush to tap it. Last week I did a big boat painting, which I haven't done one in quite a while. I forgot how difficult it was to maneuver. I usually do it in a tub, but at my, um, at my house I have a shower. So I was trying to do it in the shower without like getting soaking wet. So I think in the future I'm going to have to put on a bathing suit and just hop on in there. Because you know? I'm like, oh my god, what a mess. It's getting water everywhere. And... Something like one of those outside showers they used to have down the shore, right? I thought it would be a good... Um, publicity gimmick to do like a really big one and then get the fire department over it and, and, that would, and I thought probably blow right through the paper. So anyway. So keep my fingers crossed that, that it's going to come off and not too much come off. 
like I said, at home I would be I would be um, tapping it a little just to get it started, and then I would have the water run down and then not um, try not to go over the same area. I did find that if you I think on a particularly lazy day, I didn't have my bristle brush around and. I was washing it off and I was trying to find something handy to agitate it and I picked up a bottle brush at the sink and that made like kind of like scratching marks in it. That was really kind of cool. So sometimes um, moving the brush in different directions will give you a little bit of texture to it. no place to put it but down the drain or outside so I'm not sure there's really not that much ink actually that's on here I mean it's um, it's a lot less than the Valdez <laughs> so <laughs> I think that I'm probably pretty safe the water itself isn't changing much color yet I no, it, it will though it will end up being uh, black I have this like weird habit of sticking my tongue on the top of my mouth when I do this, and I'm trying to see if I can do it without doing that. I don't know why I, I don't know. Now, why does the tapping work better than, say, brushing over it with even a, a little bigger brush? Well, if I, if I brushed it, it would take everything off. Okay. By tapping it, I'm, I'm kind of um, still like leaving the texture. There. I mean, I could probably like rub my hand on it, but then I'll end up like with fingerprints. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, so like when I want to agitate it without stroking. Right. I don't want to put too much pressure on it. And see, when I'm using the sprayer, I don't have to do too much. The sprayer, yeah. the pressure of the water, and I think I think probably a little warmer water might might work a little better. It's kind of like um, developing film, you know, you can kind of decide how much ink you want to take off. And I, I had one piece that it had a lot of ink on it and I just kept looking at it thinking, does that have too much ink? And I think like after two years I decided to see if I could wash more ink off and it, it still came off so you can... Uh, and this would be acceptable in a watercolor show? Yes, because it's it's um, it's consider well the the um, let's say the state watercolor societies have allowed it in. They have. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten in the American watercolor yet. Um, I tried that once or twice. And, yeah. yeah, if they take if they take wash, then. Yeah, this would be accepted in a, like a transparent watercolor show. Yeah. It would? No, it would not because it's because it's basically gouache. And the ink's really, there's, you know, by the time you run it through, there's really not very much ink on it anyway. So, um, and I think a lot of watercolor places allow inks now, don't they? I mean, it seems... No, not, not Essex. No? Not generally. I'm supposed to say that out loud. They let me be a member here, and they let me in the show. So if you mess it up for me now, I'm going to be very, <laughs> very pissed. <laughs> if I can't be in any more shows well, here. I think the only one it would matter was Chatham, which was all yes. transparent. Yes. Right, right. The other, what the other shows would be okay. And I think one year, uh, Garden State, when when uh, Charles McVicker was uh, president, he had a transparent show. I wasn't able to do that. I do a very few regular watercolors anymore. I'm one of those um, paint and dab watercolors. I just really admire people that can do wet on wet because I can't. I put the paint down and it looks too dark and I'm like, you know, paint, dab, paint, dab, paint, dab. So that's what probably, <laughs> I think I do about you know, 20 layers of paint. Let's get this done real quicker. Taking too long. I guess you know if you do like that, it kind of looks like brush strokes. 
When the water starts getting black, though, I can't really see what's going on, so I have to pull it up. See, one of the nice things about having the water do it, if I had put different, like a lighter, say the first layer was light blue and then the second layer was a darker blue. Mm -hmm. If I used the sprayer and washed it off, some areas would be light blue and some would be dark blue. When I'm using the, the brush and, and doing more agitation this way, it pretty much goes down to the bottom layer, you know, the first layer. So unfortunately, if you, um, this technique is, is not as forgiving as like oil painting where you can, you know, your final layers is uh, what you're ending up with. This is more your first layer is what you end up with for the most part. So you have to try not to let yourself get carried away with adding more layers because then you get disappointed when it goes all the way back down to the, you know, solid orange or something. So so really, what you put down first is, for the most part, what you're going to get when you're doing it with the brush. If you do it with the, with the water running, then um, some of the top layers will stay. I found out, out also by accident that if you, um, say I painted something red and decided I didn't want it red, I can't get the red off, but I can wash a lot of the red off and it kind of mutes it. And then I put the ink on when I, and then when I wash it off, it's, it's a, not such a bright, loud color. You can kind of like mute it that way, which I'm probably not making any sense. Do you ever put those uh, watercolor crayons on top if you're not happy with the Yes. Color? Okay. Yeah. Keep it dry or, or wet? Um, you blend it, in? it depends. When it, when it comes out of, you know, while it's still wet, a lot of times, not, I don't know, I shouldn't say a lot of times because I don't really use it that much, but when I do use it, it's frequently while the painting's still wet. The only problem is you have to use it in an area that doesn't have a lot of black ink because the ink will smear while it's still wet. Um, this is Would you add the crayon while it's still wet or yeah. let it dry? Yeah, uh, you could do either, but I like it. Um, sometimes while it's still wet. This is taking, it seems to be taking longer. So the, the watercolor paint, the, some of it does come off. It would, it would come off if I continued to keep it in the water and kept tamping it, it would, it would come off almost entirely. It would be just more like a stain. Um, so where did you paint it where it wasn't so uh, Well, if I put the shadows on the house, then when I washed it off, the, whatever color was there, it would stay that color. I mean, if I put a darker blue on the side of the house, then it would, it would you know, wash off, but it would still be a darker blue than, say, the lighter, the lighter side of the house. And I can go over it with watercolor if I wanted to intensify something. Um, so right, or even pastel. Um, so I mean, you can you can make it as um, as much mixed media as you you want to. You could you know put all kinds of stuff on here still. You could just do this as the base, and when you do it on the hot press, you wash off more of the paint. You don't. Um, so if you look at some of the ones that are on the smooth paper, you'll see that uh, there's not as much, the, the paint's not as thick. I don't think I've ever taken this long to wash a, wash a painting off. The, the uh, container seems smaller for some reason. This is what happens when you don't paint every day. It's quicker. The problem with doing it in the in the bucket also is the water gets dirtier, so you're not 
I mean, it really would look a little better if the water was, you know, if it was running under running water because then the, the colors would be cleaner looking. It's a little. But it looks really neat. India Ink is three sixty six at Jerry's, their regular price, and AC Moore's is five dollars regular price. Really? Yeah. Because I called up today to some. Yeah, but today was a fifty five percent off, so it only ended up being two something. So since both places were equally far away from me, I ended up going to the AC Moore. But it's kind of interesting that there could be that much of a difference. And, and Michael's sells like a little six pack of the of the um, temper paint. So if you did want to try, I think it's like four something or five, and you get six six little bottles that are about yay big. So I mean, you could you could try it with like I said without making a big investment. So apparently, part of the uh, temper paint jobs, and that's why the, that's why the Yes. Yes. Okay. Isn't quite following all that. By the way, Jerry's has a Windsor Newton watercolors are now fifty percent off. Oh wow! I it's thought I price. was announced it to you all. He's got an extra large order in. Where's the Jerry's around here? West Orange. Okay. The right closest to me is Lawrenceville. Yeah. It's our closest our supply. It makes it tough when you're used to getting so much stuff online, you know, and then, like, I normally buy the 32 ounce, and to have to go out and buy little containers is kind of pain. But AC Moore and Michaels, they come in handy. I don't like this blue at all. This blue came out really muddy. It should have been a much brighter turquoise color. Um, no, I have not tried Dick Blicks. I've tried Utrecht's worked really well until they until they discontinued it. When I was teaching, I bought almost all my art supplies to Dick Blick, and I would think they would still have good supply of temper paints. They did a lot of school sales. Yeah, you know, like I said, Utrecht Utrecht did it, and then a couple of years ago they just discontinued it. So. Um, that's the problem I've been having is trying to, and I've, I've asked several teachers where they're getting it, but so much, so many of the teachers are using washable now, and that doesn't work for, um, for this. It's, it's, it's just taking way longer than usual. I can see that. While you continue your work, maybe we'll start it. Okay, sure. Right, so Sandy, Sandy will start, uh, finish up. It's pretty. It's pretty much done. I, if I was at home, I would run it under clear water to get it. Very interesting. Yes. But at this point, you could you could take those crayons and. Add some, add some, yeah, but not with this dirty, dirty water. Uh, um, I don't want you to get it on you. Maybe I'll get one of the guys to do it. I would hate for this to. So you have to be careful where the where the uh, black is that it doesn't get in there. And we'll run into that yellow. I think it's a dying art. I don't, I don't think we'll be doing it for too much longer. I don't know. If you keep doing it like that, I'm sure it'll 